Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV back with another Market Watch episode. Now today we're taking a look at some more obscure cards that you may not have noticed are actually worth a decent amount. So often on Market Watch, we take a look at big money cards with huge price spikes. However, it's also important to note some of the lesser known cards, right? Because oftentimes we might have them just sitting in our bulk and we can dig them out to sell and generate value seemingly out of nowhere. Let's get started. Alright guys, so kicking things off, we're taking a look at Insector Gigamantis. So aside from the three archetypes coming in the Grand Creators, we are also getting the World Premier Insector spell card, Zectrike Kou, which looks like it'll be a really big boost for the Insector deck. However, we also got a bunch of reprints to cards like Dragonfly, Hornet, and Zek Caliber, all of which are really important cards for the strategy. However, one card that was not reprinted was Insector Gigamantis. If Gigamantis is equipped and then sent to the graveyard, you get to special summon another Insector monster from out of your graveyard, which is really useful since basically all of the Insector cards are not hard once per turn effects. So because this card wasn't reprinted, we've seen a pretty significant jump in the prices of Gigamantis. The card was only ever printed in Order of Chaos, where the Ultras are going to cost you $12 each and the Ultimate Rares at least $20. In fact, I think the Ultimate Rare First Editions are $30 or something crazy like that. Fortunately, Gigamantis is just a one of and in Zectors probably aren't going to be a tier 1 deck or anything like that anytime soon, so the price of Gigamantis should definitely cool off over the next few weeks as some of the hype for it does die down. On top of that, I think Konami is definitely aware that this card wasn't reprinted in the Grand Creators, so we should probably expect to see it in an upcoming reprint set, so either OTS Tournament Pack or Ghost from the Past 2. If you are sitting on a few extra copies of this card, definitely consider offloading it while it's at this hyped up price. The next card that we have here is Performapal Odd-Eyes Synchron, a card that always makes me laugh a little bit because its name literally contains like three different archetypes in it, so there is some interesting new Pendulum stuff coming into the game soon, with Extra Pendulum and Beyond the Pendulum coming in Dimension Force, and then the brand new Valiant archetype coming in Tactical Masters as well. That archetype looks really cool but really really complicated. Now, Odd Eyes Synchron is an odd little card, but it has the potential to fill a very specific role as a Halki Fibrax tuner target to be summoned out of the deck. I was looking at Lithium's sample profile for the deck, as well as a couple of other Yugi tubers, and they all seem to be playing this card. It's kind of cool because you can also tune it with Deep Sea Diva, another card that they happen to play, to make a copy of Herald of the Arclight, which can either be a level 4 body to exceed with, or a negate on the field. It can also special summon a monster out of your pendulum zone, and I saw this used with a level 8 to make a copy of Baron, which is really cool. Anyways, this card does have just the one printing from way back in Light's Revenge, which was the original Battles of Legends set that came out several years ago. This card is pretty cheap at around $3 each on TCG Player at the moment. It definitely has the potential to go up depending on just how popular and viable the Valiant's deck actually is. I know that back when the Battles of Legends set first came out, this card was something you weren't really that happy about pulling it, so there's probably a ton of these sitting around in someone's hollow bulk somewhere. In my opinion, this isn't the type of card that you go out of your way to buy like a bunch of copies of, rather I would look to pick up copies here and there out of bulk or to round off trades, because I wouldn't want to invest too much in terms of dollar amount into a card like this. Next up is a card that I think is really cool and has a lot of potential. This is Astral Karibo. Now this is an interesting card that isn't just useful for Karibo decks. You can reveal a number monster from your extra deck to special summon this card from your hand and then change its level to match the rank of the number monster that you revealed. But then while Astral Karibo is on the field, you can only make a number Xyz monster from your extra deck. So basically if you summon this out, you have to go into that number monster. Now on the surface, this card does have very limited applications but I think it's actually really good, it just needs to be used by the right strategy. I believe that over the weekend there was a Sword Soul deck that actually used this card. It was a really weird Sword Soul deck that also played Gizmek Orochi in the main deck. I think the idea was that you could cheese out number 100 using Gizmek and Astral Karibo to OTK your opponent out of nowhere, but you could probably also use Astral Karibo to make like a rank 4 Xyz number monster, say if your Mo Yi were to get hit by a Veiler or an Imperm and then you just didn't have another extender. I believe that Astral Karibo was one of the cards that was slightly harder to pull from Brothers of Legend, though obviously it wasn't nearly as expensive as something like Forbidden Droplet. I do believe that this card has sat between $3 to $5 for basically the entire time since its release, and it's currently sitting at that high of $5, 
but depending on what happens with the ban list and what other decks might try to take advantage of a card like this, I could see this card potentially getting up towards the double digits. This card probably isn't going to get reprinted for quite a while since it is so brand new, and it's hard to see this card dropping lower than four to five dollars, so it actually might be worth picking up a few copies of this card because it has that potential upside. Next up, we're moving on to Soul Servant, so I don't know exactly when it is that this card got so expensive. In my mind, right up until this video, I thought Soul Servant was still only a $30 card or so. However, it turns out that this card is all the way up at $50 a piece. It's a really good card, letting you legally stack your deck with a Dark Magician card, and it also lets you banish it from your graveyard to draw additional cards, which is really useful. Of course, Dark Magicians are always going to be a popular deck to build, with a lot of casual players given how iconic the Dark Magician is. And on top of that, there is additional Dark Magician support coming in Battle of Chaos, which is the next core set, and that's naturally going to push people to pick up some of the older support cards. However, we do also have to keep in mind that we have Legendary Duelist Season 3 scheduled to be coming out in June of this year, and we should definitely expect to see Soul Servant reprinted in that set as well, which would naturally bring down the card's price. If it were up to me, and I had an extra copy of Soul Servant lying around, I would go ahead and dump it now. However, knowing the UVO community, you have to remember that Battle of Chaos is coming out in February, and then there's a 4-5 to five month gap until Legendary Duelist Season 3 comes out. So some impatient players actually might just want to try to pick up the card at the Battle of Chaos release so that they can play the deck sooner. If you are feeling lucky, you can of course hold this card and wait that little bit longer before selling it, though obviously it all depends on just how lucky you can get with finding the right buyer at the right time. Alright, so an extremely random card next, here we have Shiba Warrior Taro. This card is a level 2 Beast Warrior Earth Tuner Monster. It has a pretty simple effect where it can't be destroyed by battle, and if it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can return it to its owner's hand. This card only has one printing from the Anniversary Pack that came out way back in 2008, and there's only the one printing of the card available so far. Now the other cards from this set have trended upwards over time as we see the exclusive arts of Red Eyes and Blue Eyes from the same set sitting at some pretty crazy prices. However, I'm not sure that the collectability is the sole reason for this card's price spike as it seemingly came out of nowhere. Basically all of the sold listings on TCG Player at the moment are around the $20 mark, right? But the cheapest near mint copy available at the moment is at $55, which is a huge price jump. I feel like I may have been missing something and there's probably some way that this card is being used in some deck somewhere. The only thing I can really think of though is in Tri-Brigade Melfi, where you can use this card as a target for Obedient School to Rescue Cat, and since this is an earth monster you could use it to make Naturia Beast or Naturia Barkeon as well. This card did see some play a long time ago in the Baby Raccoon deck, but I'm almost certain that that's not the deck that's using this card in 2022. If you guys do know what deck it is that's looking to abuse this card and could have caused this huge price jump, make sure that you let everyone know in the comments down below. Next, let's take a brief look at Dragon Maid Lorepar. So as we all know, Dragon Maids are a pretty popular waifu deck with a lot of the player base, and a lot of the cards have been reprinted in either the original Maximum Gold or Maximum Gold Eldorado. Now we've seen reprints of all the main cards, things like Kitchen, Nurse, Chamber, and Hospitality. However, with all of the formerly expensive cards now being reprinted, a lot of people are looking to build the deck and so they have to buy out some of these smaller pieces, causing notable price jumps. Dragon Maid Lorepar was, I guess, the result of that. It's not a bad card, allowing you to discard it to negate the effect of a face-up monster on the field. Pretty solid for a Dragon Maid card, all things considered. Of course, the deck still isn't meta relevant or viable or anything like that, but that's not going to stop people from wanting to collect all of the cards and putting the deck together, and as a result, we're now seeing Lorepar all the way up at $13 each. I can only wonder if we're going to get a third maximum gold set with all of the last few Dragon Maid cards reprinted in Gold Rare again so that the whole deck can be matching and we can finally stop seeing so many Dragon Maid buyouts at last. Alright guys, we're gonna wrap up the video here with what I believe is one of the worst, most questionable buyouts we've seen in a long time, and that is Number Wall. So, this is a continuous trap card that prevents your number monsters from being destroyed by battle or card effects, and that's that's it. That's literally all it does. Uh, I want to think that there's a good reason for this card to be bought out. I have literally no idea. Maybe, like, the way that we were talking about Astral Karibo earlier, I guess that could have something to do with it. 
Uh, maybe if you're a really dedicated number hunter and you want to glue a few copies of this card to the outside of your binder as protection, then maybe... I don't know, man. Uh, this card is currently $4 each, which is already like $3.75 higher than it should be. But believe it or not, this card was up at like $15 earlier in the day, lowest on TCG player. I honestly can't even imagine paying like a dollar for this card, so hopefully this buyout wasn't done by any of you. If you happen to know where in your bulk this card is for whatever reason, definitely take a second to throw this card up online somewhere and see if anyone is actually willing to buy it. All right, guys, that is it for today's episode. I know probably one of the more random, weirder market watches that we've seen in a while. I know there's not as much big stuff going on right now. Everyone just seems to kind of be waiting for the ban list and to see what happens on there before making any sort of big moves. So what happens with the ban list is anyone's guess. Also, when it comes out is anybody's guess. So we just have to keep our fingers crossed. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy today's market watch, please make sure you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button for me. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the cards we talked about today and what other cards are trending on the market so I can cover those in a future episode as well. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get all of the latest and greatest content from both Tombox and myself here on the channel. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.